welcome to this edition of Rollin' Rambles. Today we're going to talk about ad blocking. More specifically, you must be the most miserable person on the planet if you don't have an ad blocker. The internet is practically unusable with an ad blocker uh, or without an ad blocker installed. Ads have gotten to a point where they are most of a page's content. Uh, almost everywhere you go, there's no way to avoid them. <clears throat> and the thing is, anybody can actually stop ad blockers just by randomizing IDs and such on the page or delivering the ads from the same server as the website itself. YouTube actually did this a long, long time ago when it figured out people were using pie holes and other firewalls and DNS configurations to block ads through blocking the Google ad servers. Google started delivering the ad information directly from the same uh, delivery system, um, you know, the same servers, you know, HTTPS, everything that the actual video content stuff is delivered through, which means to block the ads at the server level, you also have to block the actual videos. Of course, this didn't stop ad blockers because one of the primary sites that ad blockers exist to clean up is actually YouTube. Uh, but it did put a big damper on things. It made it impossible, for example, if you use a standard non-modified YouTube app. You know, app, those fake programs that uh, usually are nothing more than a glorified web page uh, or web browser packaged with an icon that only go to one website. Yeah, if you use a YouTube app on your phone, tablet, or TV, chances are you can't block ads by firewalling them off using DNS settings on your device or at your router. Instead, you have to have ad blocking built into whatever you use to look at YouTube. So eh, that's the ad blocking war. Basically, it just keeps getting worse and worse. But why does it keep getting worse? Because the truth is, ads don't work. I know, I know, nobody would be sinking millions and millions of dollars into an advertising campaign if it doesn't work. You must be wrong, Jody. Surely nobody would do that. That's just stupid. Why, why do you think such a, a wacky thought? If ads didn't work, nobody, these, these big companies that have these very smart people in them would not be sinking so much money into them. Well, let me tell you, ads do work in one way, and that is brand awareness and uh, if you have a million dollar, or not million, but billion dollar brand like Coke or Pepsi, one of the ways that you keep customers consuming your product is to remind them your product exists. They probably already have tried it and like it or don't. If they don't, it doesn't matter. But if they do and you remind them and they just, you know, they might happen to get thirsty when they hear it. That's about the only way that advertising works. But if I were to go to YouTube and put up some ads for my computer repair business, which I think is actually not allowed. If I recall correctly, uh, Google's advertising guidelines marked computer services as one of the prohibited categories a long, long time ago because of those stupid tech support scammers in Pakistan and India setting up call centers and duping poor old people into coughing up all their bank information um, under the premise that they were repairing their computer. Yeah, <clears throat> that unfortunately is a thing. But regardless, let, let's say it was for my video production services. I own, Obviously, I have a company called Gazing Cat Productions. You see a stinger at the end of every Roland Rambles video if you're watching um, that links you to that website. And because I have a video production company, maybe I want to advertise my video production company. Maybe, maybe, if they can target it really, really well, maybe I might be able to get somebody to do business with me using an ad. But, at least with my limited experience with ads, um, I have posted ads in various places. Uh, they have a, a pretty much 0% response rate. And it's not that they're crap ads either. I've actually made quite a few different ads and I've followed quite a few different um, advertising guidelines and tips and tricks and all of that. The problem is not the ads. The problem is that the ads get shown to people who don't care or who don't need it. And there's not really any way that they can know for sure that somebody needs what I'm offering. Also, 
um, computer repair services. Can't advertise that on YouTube. But if I was to post up an ad for my video production company, I'd get nothing. And I know I would get nothing. And the reason I know I would get nothing is that nobody pays attention to ads anymore. They, they filter them out mentally, if nothing else. People will walk away from the TV. They'll find something else to do. They'll uh, angrily bitch about them until the skip button appears. Pretty much anything except for actually look at the ad and go, I'm going to think about this. The only reason it works with Coke or Pepsi or whatever, or other major, usually food brands, is that the brand is already so huge that a simple reminder is advertising enough. And barrier to entry is cheap. You know, a 20 ounce Pepsi or Coke at the store down the road is, is two bucks or whatever. Uh, probably three by now, thanks to uh, good old inflation. <sighs> but advertising is not generally effective. It hasn't been for a long time. So because the only way ads do work is to either be a massive brand that just needs to put your name out there or annoy the crap out of people. Uh, and uh, th that means that you don't want to pay as much for an ad because it's not as effective. Why should I have to pay more money to get less business? That's stupid. I shouldn't have to do that. Um, on the flip side of things, why, um, if the ads are not as effective, uh, you just need to spam more of them. So if I'm a website operator and I put more ads, I keep the revenue I was getting back when people thought ads were really effective, um, but before everybody kind of figured out that ads don't work anymore, well, if I just spam more ads at my users, okay, it's a bit of a gamble, but hey, at least I'm getting paid per view or whatever, and that means that I'll at least continue to make the same amount of money as before. This is the problem with the ad incentive model, is that nobody eventually people just tune out ads even if they have to see them they ignore them they mentally chunk all of their browsing together into a set of muscle memory and and subconscious heuristics where they immediately without thinking about it recognize something as probably advertising and just ignore it um, that's why ads also have gotten so deceptive that's why if i go to ultra vnc's website uvnc.com I click on the latest version under the download section <clears throat> and I want to download it, I'm presented with like five download buttons and links. And I can pretty much be guaranteed that all of the big graphical buttons saying download now are fake download buttons that are really ads that are trying to get me to install driver booster or something, um, basically tricking me into installing some other program that is not what I actually want instead of the program that I actually want. And by viewing those ads, I'm paying the Ultra VNC people to trick me into downloading not their program. Um, but it's the only way that they can really make any money because nobody pays for free software. This I know because I write free software used by, I think, I don't have some sort of user metric method but I think at a minimum hundreds of thousands of people, if not millions, um, my software, JDupes, my duplicate scanner, is in very wide use. Um, at least that's the way I see it. And yet um, I'm lucky if anybody gives me, I don't know, I'm lucky if the contributions add up to 50 bucks a year in general over the whole course of the thing. So yeah, free software, most people don't pay for free software, so you've got to make money somehow to, to incentivize it, right? Advertising. That or you offer paid stuff. It's really, really, really hard to monetize software. Just trust me on that. It's very difficult. So <clears throat> unfortunately, advertising is basically the only way to monetize a whole lot of different things that otherwise would either not happen or would rely solely on the good graces of whoever it is that puts it out there to continue doing it, quote, for free. Because here's the ultimate problem. People's lives are limited. Your hours are a zero-sum game. You either spend your hours on one thing or on another thing. It is not a situation where you can just go, oh, I'm, I'm going to spend my time on two things at once. Or, you know, you, you can't do that. Your time is limited and therefore valuable, especially if you have certain skills which are also valuable to other people. And remember, in another video I said, 
your value, quote unquote value, is not your perception of self-worth. It is what you can do for other people. That's sort of a market philosophy of it, but that's your ultimate value is what you can do for others. And if you do stuff for other people that is valuable to them, they're willing to give you money for it. And if it, and the more valuable it is to them, the more they're willing to give up of their own resources to acquire your resources, your limited resource of time plus your limited resource of skills. I can do what I do with my software, but I'm not going to make any money from it because there are at least four other major well-known, many of them older, so more established, pieces of software doing the same thing as mine, the same general thing, finding duplicates, that are also free and open source. So if mine was just to go, hey, you have to pay for it, then I would pretty instantly have, somebody would fork it, maybe, um, and everybody would flock to the fork, and absolutely nobody would pay me for access to my paid version of my software. That's just the way it is. Um, Advertising has enabled the freemium model to transition into charging for stuff um, but still pay some of the bills in the process. Unfortunately, freemium is a race to the bottom. Freemium, in case you don't know what that is, because I, I realize that in a lot of these videos I say things that some viewers don't really understand. Um, freemium is free plus premium. So the idea is you offer a service for free. so uh, Some kind of product or service for free to the users at first. But you start charging for access to certain features um, or certain higher levels of service and that's your premium tier. Um, the problem with freemium is A, the free offering has to be good enough for somebody to actually want to get onto it. I mean, the thing is, your product is free, but my time isn't free. Why would I use your product, even for free, if it's absolutely awful? <clears throat> Why would I pay you for premium if your free offering is crap? But then you hit the other problem with freemium. If your free product is good enough, why would I pay for your premium? That That's the thing that a lot of apps and websites and whatever, software, any of it, that's the thing that a lot of these services struggle with. They cough up a free offering often without any kind of concrete plan for how they're going to make money. And they usually have to offer their free offering for years, years, siphoning up VC funding, angel investments, and all this other stuff, just people just dumping money into it with the expectation that one day we're going to be able to monetize this. Look at these millions of users. One day we're going to be able to monetize this. And when we monetize this, we'll have all this money because look at all the people that are using it for free. Except the vast majority of people don't switch to your premium plan. So that doesn't actually work. We've seen it play out time and again. Look at Twitter, now called X. Look at how Twitter basically operated at a loss for the entirety of its existence. Twitter never made money. YouTube never made money. I don't believe, now I could be wrong, but I don't believe I've ever heard anyone, anywhere, report that YouTube has ever actually made more money than it spends. It's possible, but I'm pretty sure that YouTube is subsidized by Alphabet Corporation uh, because Google controlling YouTube means they control a ton of traffic. Um, that's the whole thing with the monopoly that they just, <laughs> the DOJ just won a lawsuit against them because they're a search monopoly. Well, if you hold the uh, number one website in the world, Google, the number one traffic website, Google, which is a search engine, and the number three website, which is YouTube, which is a video hosting platform, but also a form of search engine, and these two things coexist and they kind of kick off of each other. If you get pulled into one Google ecosystem, Google can kick you over to other Google ecosystems too. There's a lot of value in controlling YouTube. Controlling YouTube, arguably, and, and controlling Google search, arguably is the entire reason that Joe Biden won in 2020. Now, um, I don't, I, I am one of those awful people that is pretty sure that, that Joe Biden's win was a bit astroturf, but we won't go there because YouTube has policies that say that I can't go there. 
So because I can't go there, I'm not going to, or this video will get banned off the platform. I'll get a strike, won't be able to post a video for a week because I was a naughty boy and said wrong think on YouTube. YouTube, which is controlled by one of the biggest corporations on the planet. YouTube, which has a monopoly for all practical purposes on video hosting and searching. YouTube, which is run by Google, which has a monopoly on search and therefore indirectly controls what we're all allowed to think. Google is the number one advertising company on the planet. Google's primary business model is advertising. Google is about to kill advertising blocking in Chrome. Google Chrome, by far the most popular in terms of penetration, um, you know, the number of people using it percentage-wise, um, Google Chrome is by far the most used browser, Microsoft Edge, which Microsoft artificially forces down every Windows user's throat, um, is also, <laughs> it, it's, it's heavily used because Microsoft shoves it down your throat. It's based on Google Chrome. Brave? Oh, that brave ad-blocking browser, blah, blah, blah. Well, hey, it may not do the, the ad-blocking, but it's still based on Chrome, and it's going to be harder for Brave to continue to operate. Um, it as Chrome diverges from the Brave code base. So, yeah. Uh, Google is firmly entrenched all over the place. Their primary business is advertising, and so they want everybody advertising Google ads everywhere. But that means that everything is crap. Have you noticed if you use YouTube and you don't have an ad blocker, either because you're on a TV where you can't, or you're, on a, or you're one of those weirdos that doesn't have an ad blocker because you don't know how or don't think about it or whatever, by the way, go get uBlock Origin. Uh, and if you're using Chrome, switch to a Firefox fork because Firefox bought an advertising firm and now Firefox is becoming an ad company too. Mozilla, rather, is becoming an ad company too. Um, so switch to Waterfox. That's the Firefox fork I use. Uh, just to stay away from these companies that control all this advertising, also controlling your browsing. But yeah, uh, Google being the number one advertising company, there's no way that they're going to let you get away from that, not without some uh, serious intervention from third parties. And uh, because of the combination of the freemium system that, you know, it became popular because the free stuff was good, but then uh, all of a sudden, oh, but we actually want to make money off of you. Um, and they do things like claw back features that were free and make them paid. Um, several websites did that to me uh, over time and it pissed me off um, which makes you not want to pay for it actively makes you not want to pay for it why would I pay for something you were giving me for free because now I know the only reason that you took it away is so that you could force me to give you money that's extortion screw you so that's the way that I look at it that's the way a lot of people look at it and the problem with freemium is that uh, the only other way to fund it is through advertising because somebody's got to pay for the free shit so advertising is huge and nobody and it's ineffective so people don't want to pay as much for it so there has to be more of it which makes things even more crappy um, and that's why ad blockers are required they're basically mandatory if you don't want to go insane while browsing the mental load from ignoring ads is absurd it's, I don't understand how anybody puts up with it because the, the thing is the more effort you have to spend doing something even if it's subconscious effort the lower your barriers are to other things that are not healthy for you. This is uh, covered by several other people on the internet, but there were some experiments where they um, they did some willpower tests. They had um, they had like people. They had uh, two different foods. One was good, one was bad, and one set of people was told you have to you have to eat this bad food, but the good food's there. And the other set of people were told, you can eat the good food. And the people who had to um, eat the bad food, when they rushed these people into some cognitive tests immediately after, the people who had to eat the bad food instead of the good food, um, they were nowhere near as good at the cognitive testing. They were mentally exhausted. Um, and when you're mentally exhausted, your, your barriers go down and you're willing to do things that are not in your best interests um, just because you don't want to think anymore. Um, I would argue this is actually why a lot of people end up capitulating and paying for Netflix <laughs> or, or, or Disney Plus or some other crap like that. Because even though you could pirate it, you're so exhausted from looking at all the advertising at the end of the day, you just don't want to have to deal with it anymore and you're willing to fork over 15 bucks a month 
um, so that you don't have to think about it anymore. Anyway, that, that's about all I'm going to say on this subject. Get a friggin' ad blocker. You really, really need to if you don't have one. And no, Brave is not good enough. I don't use Brave because it's based on Chromium. Um, I use Firefox Forks, and uBlock Origin is my ad blocker. You should, too. While you're at it, there's also a thing called I Still Don't Care About Cookies, which you can get in the extension things um, for most browsers. There's another one that you can't get in extension stores for some reason. It's hosted on GitHub somewhere, and you have to find a fork of it that's actually kept up to date, but it's called Bypass Paywalls, and it lets you bypass all the stupid news websites, dumb paywalls, that prevent you from seeing articles but let search engines read them. So that's another thing you should consider getting. Now, maybe if you're interested, if you've gotten this far and this stuff interests you, let me know if you would like for me to make an educational video I've been thinking about where I go through a computer, not necessarily my exact computer, but I show you the ways in which I set things up and I do things on a computer so that you can live the uber-based life that I do. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and all that crap. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care.